crew builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Metal Earth U2 Dragon Lady from Lockheed Martin, and this build looks awesome with its really long wingspan and interestingly shaped cockpit area. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we get some brief instructions on how to build our model, and then we have some history on the U2 Dragon Lady. Then on the left here, we get a look at some other models in the series, and on the right, we have a QR code which we can scan to get a 360 look at our model. This helps us when we're putting little bits of detail on that we need to know how they need to be properly orientated. And finally, at the bottom, we have a difficulty rating here of just over medium, which means there might be some parts in here that require some patience. Groovers, let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions. And we have our metal. And take a look at the detail on this. And those wings are huge. All right, Groovers, let's go ahead and take out our first couple of pieces. And there we have it. All of our pieces needed for our first page of building. Now the first thing we're gonna be doing is starting with part one here. And looking at part one, you'll notice there's a color side and there is this nice silver side. And looking at this silver side, you can see a whole bunch of little scoring marks. Well, those little scoring marks are actually to help us make a proper shape here. Now what we're gonna do is not just fold this and make a straight fold. We could do that, it would be easy, um, but we might have a hard time getting those tabs in their proper placing because what we need to do is actually create a, a little um, kind of a concave effect here, a little bit of a U-ing, if you will, of a U-shape like that. And uh, what I'm gonna do to get that U-shape is I'm going to lightly press using my uh, bending tool here, but you can use pretty much anything you have at home. Maybe a pen uh, that's nice and rounded. Maybe a pencil will be better because you don't want to have any of those little uh, sharp little edges there. That will really help you try to get that little shaping. And let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to place it down the table and then I'm just going to press just like that right to where the fold line is. And I'm just doing a little one and uh, that's all you need. Just that little bit of pressure. Now that I got that, um, I'm going to go and that may have even, even been too much, so we're, we're going to see that in a moment. And then I go right to that fold line and bend it back. Now you'll see that we have a tab that we need to connect here on the back end. And what we're going to do with that is just bend our tab first and then we're going to insert it. Just like that. Do a little press. Boom! And you can see at the bottom there, we have a nice uh, little spacing in that piece, and that's exactly what we want. Now, if we want a little bit more, we can put our tweezers in there and kind of play with it, but you don't want to do too much. You don't want a harsh bend, on, especially on these little detail lines there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna bend this little top tab here now over. And there's part one all complete. Very nicely done. Now the second piece here is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. And the reason why that is, is because it has a coned front. And I can actually see a little bird there that I'm going to take care of. Um, there we go. A little burr or a burr is when you have a little piece of metal left over from when you cut the pieces out. If you have good nippers, uh, you shouldn't really have this problem. But these guys are starting to get a little worn down from not just metal models, but other projects I've done. Put them to the side here. Now I have a uh, interesting little tool here that's gonna help me get a nice little point, but again, I think I'm gonna try to use my bending tool. This is a tool I use to um, grab tabs and twist them and bend them in different directions and to really get in there and secure those tabs really tightly. Now, I think I can also use it to help me shape this part, but the front here is really bent, so maybe a smaller piece. Yeah, maybe something like this. 
Hmm. Now, the way I like to do things is I like to start big and work my way smaller. And the reason why I do that is so I don't accidentally get any uh, hot spots in my metal, which is very easy to do, especially with these more detailed pieces. The key here is to bend every part of the metal. And yes, I'm avoiding that uh, front part there. Very good eyes for those in the audience that saw that. And actually, um, this one seems to be the right shape. So maybe I shouldn't have started with this and I'll show you why. See the top there, it has like a little bit of a point on it and that's where the metal, where I can't really get in there. So I have to press even harder to really get a nice shaping. Okay, I think that's all right. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm gonna use my tweezers to help me. Now I could use my uh, tool here and help me get a nice little shaping. I, I could do that, um, but I think I think the best thing for me to do would be to use a uh, my tweezers to get that shaped. So let's see here. Now what I like to do is I like to use multiple bends to get my shaping done. matching that edge there and then just kind of getting to the uh, to the points and what I'm doing when I get up here is using the side of my tweezers to kind of help me get the shape now the majority of the uh, work is done at the tip of the tweezers so I know that when I am trying to shape this area what I'm trying to do is grab just the tip of the metal and I'm bending it down and I'm being very careful to not try and take that paint off now it's black paint so if it does uh, come off all I can do is use a sharpie and that should help me get the shape I need. I think that that is actually a really nice rounded point. I'm using the tip of my tweezers here to try to help me get a little more definition at that tip. But I think that that looks pretty good. Now we can come to the back here and we can just make this a little bit more tubular as well. And we're just matching up the edges. That's all we're doing matching up the edges. Don't forget to use multiple bends here. You don't want to square back. You want a really nice kind of um, shaped back here. A rounded back, I should say. You want a really nice kind of rounded back. Okay, there we go. And again, using multiple bends to do this. I know I'm using black gloves on black parts. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. It might be a little bit difficult. But what I just did there was made a nice little cone. Nice little cone. All right, cool. Now that we got our cone finished, we can actually add that little tail piece that we finished up earlier. It's actually a stabilizer, it's not the tail. Um, let me go ahead and put this on. Again here, what's really important is we wanna make sure we're putting these on the proper way the first time. So we're gonna make sure that when we're looking at the instructions that we hold the pieces in the proper orientation and uh, also make sure that our parts are facing the proper way. And there we go. Now we got our tabs in place, we can secure them and we need to secure them with a nice tight tab twist. Um, you can also um, bend these if you want to, but I really do recommend putting a nice twist on there. Um, make sure you don't press too hard and flatten the wing. That would be uh, pointless. You would lose your definition that you worked so hard to achieve. And there we go, our first part, nice and attached. I love it when we get our first piece in there. It looks good, looks good. And now we move on to part three. Part three is actually even easier for us to uh, put together here. With this one, we are just doing a straight little bend here, just like that. And before we go and go close it, um, we're not gonna close it all the way. What we're gonna do instead is we're going to uh, bring it up to our piece here and we're going to try to attach it. Press hard, do a twist. Now, one recommendation here as we twist our tabs. Now, one recommendation I have to suggest while building any metal model 
is if you twist one clockwise, make sure you twist the other counterclockwise. And the reason for this is it just really helps you create a really nice tight connection and it also creates all of your, it also helps you keep your pieces in line. There we go. Our uh, nice little tail piece there added on and you'll see it's not wobbly either. I love it when things come together that easily. Now I feel like I'm going to eat my words a little bit later, but you know, say la vie. Let's move on to the next piece. Just like before, we're going to uh, shape this little guy here with a little bit of indention and we're going to use this guy here to do it. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I might have to do a little bit more bending here around the back. Uh, we'll see though once we get it all together. Let's move on to our next piece here, which is part five. And um, put that guy down right there. Now part five is definitely a cylindrical piece, but it's also still a cone. As you can see, we have those scoring pieces here along the back of the metal. And this is the part here that we wanna see on the outside. So of course, always make sure that we're folding uh, the inside here on the inside, not this side here, which is the color side. I know I worded that improperly, but you know what I meant. Let's go ahead and grab our shaping tool. Now I'm gonna use my dapping set uh, to give me a hand with this piece. This one's a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. We started that little bend there and that's a really nice shaping start. Uh, now we can move on to something maybe a little bit bigger. Um, Here's Animate Orange's tools here. Let's get that try here. Okay, and now that we got that rolling there, we're gonna move on to the next little bit here, which is just a smaller cylinder. Um, I think this one here will be a nice shaping to kind of help me get what I want. Get these wheels out of the way. Okay, I think... All right, I think that is good. I don't wanna connect this all the way yet. I'm gonna round that off a little bit. A little bit later on though, we are going to try to hide that tab the uh, best we possibly can. There we go, nice little shaping there. Uh, now we can go ahead and form this wheel. The wheel, we're just gonna do a nice little bend and we're going to do a series of small bends to help us get that nice cylinder shape. If you have a set of smaller tweezers, those would also be really good to use here, just like these guys. And now we're going to push this guy into here. Cool. bend that down and secure these two guys together and now if you want to you can go around this wheel here and kind of really make sure that detail looks nice and nice and together there we go that looks awesome and now that we got that wheel attached we can go ahead and add that piece that we were working on a little bit earlier and uh, now this might not go on as easy as some of the other ones did Okay, that little back piece is attached. I'm gonna press a little harder on this. I really do want a good attachment, and I think I did all right. Um, but I might have to do a little bit of manipulation in the end to get everything to line up the real way I want it to be lined up. Okay, now that we got this piece here complete, uh, we can work on some of the smaller, finer details, which is gonna be part six. Now, these parts are actually pretty easy to form. Um, they're just little tiny half folds. So we take these guys here and we bend them just like that. And then we go right to this little wheel housing area and we insert the detail. 
All right, there is our little wheel guards there on. And again, I'm gonna play with that to make sure everything is nice and straight once we have everything together. If I keep playing with it, it's gonna get a little rickety. So let's go ahead and place this down here for now and start working on part seven, which is our first wing. Now, just like before, we do have to put a little bit of shaping in here uh, to make this a good wing. We don't want this flat. So looking on the inside again, we can see all these little lines here. And what we're going to do, just like before, is we're going to use a shaping tool to help us get that insertion or to help us get that shaping. Now I'm going to go right to that line, which is right here. And then I'm working the piece. Again, going right to that line and being mindful of how I'm shaping this part. I don't want to shape it the wrong way either. It's very important that we make sure we're consistent. Okay, I think I'm a little happier with that now. And uh, now we can bend this in half. Now I'm not going to close it, but I'm going to go pretty close. There we go. Now before we go and close this, we're actually going to form the edge over here, which is a cylinder. And I'm going to use one of my tools to help me get that. I'm really trying to make sure this is nice and bent. I think that's good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press these little guys here, just like that. Same thing on the other side here, just like that. I think on the other wing, what I might try to do is instead of forming this first, or uh, bending the wing first, I might try forming this cylinder first, just to try to get a really good cylinder shape. Cause I'm really like, I like to have nice sharp shapes. And while I can do it this way, it might be easier to do it the other way. Okay, now that we got that in there, we can bend those guys back down. There we go. Now we can move on to uh, part eight here. Uh, part eight is pretty simple to form. It's just a little tiny box, really. Uh, we're gonna grab the edges and bend them down. Just where those tabs are basically there's a little little piece of metal that we're bending down and the back end here uh, we're also going to bend down but just we match the edges awesome that does look really good i think now we got that little bit of detail we can put it onto the wing um it goes right here just like that looking good looking good I like that detail the more detail we add onto the planes honestly the better they look and I'm really glad that Metal Earth didn't skip out on this okay now that uh, we have that one little wing there finished we can put that down to the side over here too and we can work on our next bit which is part nine Part nine is also one of those ones that's very interestingly shaped. We need to get a nice little point here. And I'm gonna see if I can use some of my tools to help me with that. Uh, let me see here. Bringing that around. Again, we don't wanna make any hot spots. That's a key here. It's very easy to do. Okay, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good at least. Um, 
Now, let's see if we can go ahead and place this onto our wing, just like we did with the other bit of detail. This one comes up here a little bit more north, though. There we go. A little bit of wobbliness there, though. Um, the problem is that we're going to be actually uh, closing this, and if we do a twist, then when we go to close the wing, you're going to have some areas that might have a little bit of a high point, or they might poke through a little bit, or they might not close the way we want them to, and that might cause some misshaping. So you're kind of running a little bit of a, a game here. You really do need to make as much of a tight connection as possible, and the only way we can do that is by grabbing as much of the metal in our tweezers as possible. I don't think that this movement here is going to be a massive deal, but over time, the more pieces that move, the more issues we're going to have. So let's just keep that in mind. Now we're going to flip this dude upside down and we're here. All right, we're here now. Let's see what we got to do. We're going to be adding on another piece, which is part 10. Part 10 is this guy right here. And what we need to do with part 10, of course, is uh, get a nice little cylinder shape. Do this. I'm actually going to start with a bigger one, uh, just in case. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to shape this a little bit more, of course, but uh, it's a good starting cylinder shape, I think. Okay, so that's one piece there. We can grab part 11 here as well. Same thing, we're going to form this guy. Do one of these maneuvers. Can't really see that with gloves, but I am pressing hard. Okay. Now the plan here is to take this one, bend that like that. And then I'm gonna take this guy here and we are going to insert them just like that. Boom. Now, though, we need to make sure that this tab is properly connected. And the way that it tells us to connect it is with a twist. So we're going to press as hard as we possibly can. And all right, now that's our little guy there attached. Looking pretty good so far. But like I said, with this one little twist, it's, uh, it's not really connected all that well. So now we need to uh, connect this onto our wing. And um, I think this might be a little tricky because, you know, I don't think I was supposed to um, attach the one bit there uh, as I did, but we're about to see. I'm gonna flip this around just like that. And now it's a matter of just inserting these guys. Got that one side in. Okay, now that we got this guy here, we're gonna secure these tabs. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna secure them with twist first. So I'm gonna twist left, and this guy I'm gonna twist right. And I'm pressing hard, left, and this guy we're gonna twist right. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bend these tabs down the direction I twisted them in hopes that the twist that I did and now the flattening that I'm doing will be enough to keep those uh, tabs at bay and also allow me to manipulate everything I need to into its proper shaping. And look at that! That looks really good. I think we did a fantastic job with our wing. What do you think? Um, but now that we're done with our wing, uh, we need more parts. And there we have it. All of our parts needed for that third page of building. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing on this page is grabbing part 12, and we're going to continue working on that wing we almost completed there. And uh, what we're going to need to do is just kind of go through here and form this into a nice uh, cylinder shape. 
Now, unfortunately, in that last little bit there, I lost my audio. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Sorry about that, everyone. Things should sound a little bit better from now on, though. As I just double check that my audio is actually recording. There we go. Go like that. A little bit of a smaller piece there. Really want to make sure that that front piece gets formed. Okay, just like that. And now, bring this guy here to the front. And what I'm going to try to do is kind of work off that edge that I already made by forming that first piece. And I'm going to slowly work these guys into their shaping. Oh man, that was no bueno. No bueno indeed. Oh, dude. Dude. That was looking so good too. Why did I do that? You silly goat. All right, we're good. I think we're good. I think we're okay. A little bit of an emergency there, but we worked it out. All right, now that we have this guy kind of partly shaped, what we need to do is actually add this on uh, to this guy right here. Now, uh, this should be interesting. The first thing we're gonna do is close this wing up. Go right here to the bottom. You know what, I'm actually gonna attach the top pieces first. And then I'll worry about that bottom piece because I might actually have to undo um, some of the work that I already did in order to be able to get that into its proper placing. Um, we'll see though. This is proving to be a little challenging. I'm not super happy with this with this configuration here on the front. I'm just not. I think it could have been done better. I don't know. We'll see though. Let's wait till the whole thing's together and we'll go from there. Now that we got this completely done though, it's time to move on to our next step, which is actually forming the second wing. Now a lot of this detail has actually already been performed, uh, so if I skip through it, that's why. Now if you have any questions through any of the pieces that I do skip, just make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Now let's just go ahead and make that definition. And close those tabs on either end. And there we go, cool. Pretty nice, or well, I think so at least. Now that we got that little bit of end detail done, we go back to that little tiny guy up here. This is part 14. Same thing as before, we're gonna grab either side here and just bend those straight down. And then we're gonna create that triangle on the back. Okay, and there is our second wing all complete. Uh, like I said, jump through that. It was pretty much exactly the same thing as last time, just on a different side. Now we have the B and this is the A assembly. Let's go ahead and put them down here. And now we're gonna work on part 19. Part 19 is a pretty interesting one. That's our cockpit there. These are our wheels. Um, now what I'm going to do is do something like I've done before and kind of bend this through the center. One thing I've noticed though, is there's an odd kind of tape reflective bit there. I don't know if the camera picks that up or not, but uh, it, it's it's odd. I don't know if it, I don't 
don't know if it's discoloration from the process of this getting painted, but still very interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, just bend this over and begin our bending process here. And yes, I'm also getting that cockpit as well. Now the cockpit is a little bit different in that we're going to need to roll it a little bit as well. And uh, I have a tool for that. That's a, a cake decorating tool, believe it or not. Really good for this kind of work. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And now we're going to round off that cockpit, like I said. Um, now, I'm actually going to need a smaller one than this one here. Let's go with this guy here, just to start it off. And what I want to do is I want to create a rounded cockpit area. And the way I'm doing that is by moving the tool back and forth. And again, by kind of getting a start, um, I can really help this piece come along a little bit later. Okay. There we go. I'm just kind of like suggesting this piece as I go. I really don't want to kind of overdo it. I really just want to suggest it. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to need to close this up even more. And I, and I do realize that. Um, but before we get too into it, what we're going to do is we're going to design these wheels. Now, what I'm going to do is go around and close all of these pedals. And what I'm doing with these pedals is I'm actually making sure that they all line up. Grab my detailed tweezers here. There we go. Making sure these guys line up just like that. Okay, and that is our wheels kind of formed up. Now before we go and actually connect all of these uh, wheelages together, what I want to do is, uh, of course, to catch a little bit of a piece here, and that's part 20. This is a little tiny little bit of detail that's going to go right here on the back. It's like a little fender. Now, where did that piece go? I know it's here. Wow, that blended right in. Black matte and that little tiny piece do not match. You would think that piece would line up a little bit better, but it really didn't. Hmm. Okay, now that we got that part in there, that's part 21, we need to go ahead and add the other little bits on here. That's these guys right here, and they fold just right in half. Okay. And now these guys go just above the wheel wells. There we go. Cool. Bend these guys down just a little bit. Awesome. That does look kind of cool. Now, keeping this open, I think we're still doing pretty well here. Uh, I still think we're doing pretty well here. We just need to make sure that this stays together. But once we have the cockpit in the right area, I think it will uh, kind of keep its shape. Let's move on to our next little bit here. That is going to be part 23. And with part 23, we also need to make sure that that inside is bent. So what I'm going to do is just keep on pressing. This was a little harder to do because of how skinny this piece needs to be. Let me see if I can grab another one of my smaller tools here to help me out. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Now, by using a bigger piece, it helps us get a little bit smaller. I'm bringing these guys back here into shape. Mm -hmm. Put these guys together here. All I'm doing is just going along the edge and kind of making sure everything lines up the best I possibly can. And there we go. Same with this side here. There we go. 
and just kind of make sure all these guys line up. That's really the best best thing we can do for these pieces is just make sure they line up really nicely. No gaps on those edges, boys and girls. No gaps. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, now we can grab some of these smaller little pieces here. Uh, the first guy is this one right here. And we go right to the edge and we bend her down. Same thing with the other side. Right to the edge. And we're going to bend her down. Right to the edge, bend her down. Boom! Grab my detailed tweezers. It just makes it easier for me to be able to put these into their places when I do that. And uh, this one goes towards the front over here. Left, and you, sir, are going to go right. There we go. Okay. And now we can add this other little bit of detail here. It is really hard to see these smaller bits of detail uh, with a desk that is also black. I'm starting to think that maybe I should go for a different background, but I haven't found a mat that I like. I was designing a magnetic mat for a little while, but I had a really hard time with the whole COVID thing. It really messed up my, my business plans for this year, or for last year. But this is a new year, and maybe I can get those magnetic mats made, which would be really cool if I could. Now that we've got that little front bent, we can put this guy in here. And this one here goes on the front. And like that. Boom! Yeah, we're making some progress here. Let's get that lined up and that guy lined up too. Great! Okay, looking great. Now we can put this on to our wing. And the first one we're going to be grabbing is A. Now see here we want to do this and I started with the back ones maybe I go with the bottom first yeah there we go okay and there we go that's nice and attached now we gotta attach it to our main body here. This should be interesting. Um, again, I'm gonna start from the top and then work my way to the bottom. There's our top. I guess we're gonna be closing this, so I might as well go ahead and make a more cylindrical fit here. grab our wheels out of the way again we're not going to close it but we're going to pretend to pretty much close it and the reason why we're doing this is just to get a shape now when we put this back together in theory <laughs> it should be easier for us to understand how it goes together See, I feel like the bottom tabs are the top tabs should be connected first, and then the bottom tabs. I think it looks just. A little, I, think it, I just feel like it's better to do it that way. Now that you can see that we bent that bottom piece, you can see how the tabs are more in line now than they were before. So I'm going to use my detailed tweezers here, and I'm going to work on each tab one by one to get them in their spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly bend them down just to help me guide them into place. There we go. There we go. Getting close there, getting close. Just a little bit more manipulation. Okay, before I get a little too crazy here, um, because I already have the top ones in here, I'm gonna go secure them as best as I can. One, two, 
Hmm. How can I get this to fit even better? I think the best thing for me to do is almost to like kind of roll the part back on itself. And, but I, I wonder if I maybe made this one piece too much of a bend, and that's why I'm having too hard a bunch of time to get my piece in there. That's what I'm thinking here. Or maybe I need to bend this even more, and that's why I'm having a hard time getting this to go together. Oh, I got her in. Okay, 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 okay. Now we're going to grab that there, and we are going to flatten that just to get that part in. Okay, so I got the one in there, and I'm going to work on this far one here too. Um, if I can get this one in, then that center won't be no problem. I need to get in better, that's all. Whew! That is not an easy step. I'm not going to lie. Uh, getting that little piece there on the front is uh, is challenging. And it looks like I accidentally misshaped my cockpit here a little bit. Oh, man. Well, once we get everything in place, I'll make sure to straighten that out. And uh, I think we also build up a little bit on that front there, too. Anyways, with that part connected, uh, we need more parts. And there we have it, all of our pieces needed to build the U2 Dragon Lady. Now I went ahead and completed this part over here, um, just because it's exactly the same as we've done last time, which just basically forming this piece right here, this is part 26, and then attaching the wing to it, along with some of the smaller bits of detail. Um, pretty simple to do once you've already done it on the other side. If you struggled with this one, you're probably going to struggle with this one, but they are exactly the same in terms of building them. Okay, now let's go on to actually attaching this piece now onto the fuselage too. My goodness, I am Mr. Butterfingers. Here we go. Actually, there's a little bird there on the top I missed. That sucks. There we go. Okay. Now, being that this is my first plane model that I've kind of built here on the show, there's some things that I'm learning from this experience, which I think I'm going to take from uh, take away. And that is that I really do want to round off those edges to get a really nice um, kind of finished look on a plane, especially with one that looks like this with all these rounded edges. I just wish I would have been more consistent a little bit earlier. I have to go back and definitely fix some of these pieces back here. Um, that's what happens when you put a model down, which you may not notice. I'll put a model down and then come back to it. You know, you really do have to be patient trying to get some of these smaller tabs in. This is not an easy piece. I can't understate that. <laughs> I really can't. Uh, just getting these smaller little bits of detail in just seemed to be very difficult. And I think it's because of how I rounded this shape is why I'm having such a hard time getting it in there. But it also could be that I need to round off um, this center here a little bit more. So I'm going to play with that a little bit and see what I can do. Um, you know, I can, it seems like I can get like this one tab here in the back really easily in. Um, and it's just, it's really hard to secure the tabs, you know. guys is working them in one by one that's really the best way to get that in there and whoo I think that is complete I love it all right um, not too happy with how the front looks right now you can see that these two guys right here really don't look a whole lot the same uh, so we're gonna have to fix that a little bit later but Let's move on to the next piece right now that we're going to add on to the plane, and that is our tail. And the way that we're going to do this is by turning this guy, I think, like that, and then doing something like that. Let's see. 
I think I'm going to follow the instructions on this one. I was going to try to hide the tabs, but being that I have no access really to the inside, uh, besides going to the bottom, I, I don't think that would be a really good idea to try to hide the tabs in this particular situation. I, I mean, I could do it. It would just be a really big heartache. Um, I could do it. It would just be a really big headache. Let's go ahead and just try this now here. Maybe I start, start from the top. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I don't want to press too hard and accidentally uh, break any of my pieces or possibly misbend them. But at the same time, I don't want to... I mean, I gotta get the pieces in there, right? Let's see by doing that and then coming up yes there we go work it work it yes all right that looks a little better and we can shape it out that looks beautiful now hmm absolutely beautiful now <laughs> let's see if we can pull this back here there we go okay and now we just gotta close up this tail. Um, let's see here. I wanna hide this tab, so I'm gonna bend this one this way. There we go. Okay. And now we can attach the bottom. Now with this one, um, I'm not gonna hide this tab. I Maybe I should. Maybe I should hide this tab. Oh, I don't know. Might be easier to hide this one actually. I have access to the back, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to try to hide it. Let's see what happens. Okay, now I've completed this, but I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit more, and I'm gonna form it a little bit more because I don't like how far away those pieces of metal are. I want them to be a tighter fit. Let's see here. Can I get the trusty needle nose pliers in here? Oops. I don't want to flatten it though. Well, it might be a little too late. I might have a back flat here. I'm gonna have to get my other, um, dang it, I'm gonna have to get my other uh, set of pliers to get that done correctly. But that's okay. Okay, there we go. That looks, uh, that looks pretty good. I'm still gonna form out that back a little bit, maybe with another pair of tweezers. Uh, but for right now, we're looking pretty decent. Let's go ahead and attach this little center piece here. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna have access to this one, so we're gonna do this one more traditionally. And maybe I should have attached the other one traditionally too because I wouldn't be able to do both of them and that would have kept it more symmetrical. We'll see how this looks and we'll learn from my mistakes, right? Attaching the wheels. Attaching the wheels. Let's see if I can attach the wheels in a timely manner. Probably not. Every time I try to rush these builds, it seems like things go wrong. Oh, why, oh, why do I rush these builds? That was horrible. And um, as you know, I will be releasing a, uh, a CD only available at your local HMV. Man, those wheels are not easy to uh, get in there. That was, uh, that was tricky. Now I'm just gonna try rounding this front piece here. I don't wanna accidentally have that metal bend in though, so. You have, almost have to have the two seams kinda touching in order to be able to do this right. All right. I think that's okay for right now. Let's go ahead and put that down before we cause any more destruction. And we're going to move on 
to building our cockpit with part 27. Now 27 is formed by having our little pieces there. And of course, looking again at that little shaping, we are going to bend. Now this is a little bit of an odd shape, but we can start by just getting the generic shape and then work our way down in sizes to the proper one. I think that looks actually pretty good. Let's just uh, put a little bit more pressure on the sides. I don't want to have any of these little pieces sticking out. Okay, now. I think that looks really good. I think I did a pretty good job there. I think I did, I think I did. Now we're gonna go ahead and take these and just bend them out like that. Remember to go right to the edge, very important. And the same thing with the front. There we go. Grabbing our plane now. We're gonna be attaching this in a couple of different places. I can see this being tricky too. So, uh, the sharp edges back here are the ones that go into the cockpit area. There's that one. Okay, there we go. We got that little front there all complete. Now we can put that down and start working on our next piece, uh, which is part 28. This is basically a giant cone and the rest of this is even better because it's just the stand. So this is really the last piece of our airplane here. Oh, kind of nerve wracking. Okay, let's get let's get ready with it. It's just, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with the basics here. Let's just make that little cone shape we're using our tool that we've done multiple times throughout this build. I think with this piece here, it has to go into a giant circle. So, um, this without creating any hot spots too which is quite difficult to do believe it or not like I've already kind of got one there uh, happening in the center um, I, I could do the leaf pattern but like I'm worried that this is such a big piece that if I do the um, the micro bend method which is one of my favorite ways of bending pieces like this um, that I will misshape it because I kind of have to almost follow it with each one of these pedals as I go. And maybe that's just what we have to do with this build. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta adapt. We shape that side, now let's work on this one here. So all I'm doing here is just doing a lot of small bends and what I'm doing is matching up the borders the best I possibly can. You may not see me moving my tweezers all the time. Um, believe me, I am. They're constantly in motion with every uh, single bend and shape here. I think we're coming along kind of well. All right, we're in the area now of no return. The uh, cap here can kind of wait to be fully um, fully shaped. I just want to make sure I don't end up with a teardrop front. I hate teardrops so much. I got kind of like a war on teardrops. Mm. Okay. Now with these ones, I'm going to try to hide them. I hope it's not going to be in vain. Okay, we got that nose cone kind of like that. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to bend the female side here, because we've got the males bent down. Uh, we're going to bend the females here. And... There we go. There we go. I just need a little bit of a down on the, uh, on the holes. If you get that... Whoopsie! If we get that little bit of downage, we should be rocking. 
it's going to be this furthest one here that's going to be the hardest for me to get. Ooh, we did it. We did it. Not yet, technically, but we're going to in a minute. We did it. Cool. Awesome. And look, we didn't even get that little teardrop on the front. Because we thought ahead. See? No teardrop. Very cool. Okay. Now that we got this, but the back is teardropped. Damn it. Let's just fix that real quickly. There we go. Now she's rounded. See? This is why shaping tools are awesome. They can help you correct any kind of mistake you get. And, um, yeah. That looks great. Now let's see about getting this little nose coney on here. Of course, we're going to put the uh, seams down, kids. We're not making that mistake this late in the build. The problem is, though, is that in order for me to, quote, hide these tabs, uh, the black side is not on the supporting side, so these are kind of like going to be oddly placed, and hopefully they'll be a good enough seal. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, we got to fix the tail a little bit there and work on some of the detail, but for the most part, that looks really sweet, doesn't it? I mean, look how long this wingspan is too. Really neat. Now let's put that down there very gently and begin work on our stand. Now we built these stands before, you kind of know how they go together, it's pretty simple things. Um, the first thing we're going to do here is bend the post. This. Always bend the long sides first, it makes things a lot easier for you in the end. Okay, there we go. Grab these guys here. And bend this down. Just like that. And then we take these guys and go right to the edge. And what I do is I bend them in multiple stages so they look nice. Now, the way you actually curl these is kind of independent on every model. You'll go through and you'll probably change them a few times, the little prongs here. So don't necessarily take mine as a good reference point at this time. Just because we don't really know until we use the model um, how much of these need to be actually bent. What's funny, I build these stands a thousand times and even still, this is what happens when you rush, kids. Every time when you rush, you always make that mistake. The base is always the flat part. It's always the flat part. This is where you put the model. But if you put like three prongs here, or maybe three prongs at the bottom, um, that way, you know, three versus two, everyone knows the difference, right? Except for disorderly cone because he doesn't seem to pay attention to the instructions. There we go. That's our stand. And now with our stand complete, we have the U2 Dragon Lady. And look at this thing. It looks absolutely beautiful. Put it on its stand. Oh, awesome. 